Hello everyone, welcome to the FT Share channel. In this video, we are going to talk about injection. Starting from the mechanism of work to the tips and tricks for maintenance, where maybe many of you already know that injection is a component that is present to replace the function of the carburetor that we discussed in the previous video. So, without further ado, let's get started. Injection was first discovered by a British engineer named Herbert Ackroyd Stewart in the middle of 1891. So you could say it is an old school technology. Then 20 years later, in 1911 to be exact, it was patented and in 1912 it began to enter the market. But in fact, it is not as we imagine because this first injection model has a lot of differences compared to modern injection tablets. This first injection is called jerk injection where the pressure obtained to pump the fuel is obtained by relying on a piston that moves mechanically. Of course, this is very different from modern injection, which uses electronic fuel pump pressure. The use of jerk injection on the vehicle engine itself takes quite a long time, about 30 years after its discovery. Where Jonas Hesselman, through his company, Hesselman Engine, tried to apply it in diesel engines, starting from the application in the intake manifold, which we know as indirect injection, and also the placement of injection in the cylinder, or what we know as direct injection. Then, 20 years later, in 1940 to be exact, Alfa Romeo developed an electronic injection system using the pressure of the gas pump, and in 1954, Mercedes-Benz also began to use fuel injection in its vehicles. As we said before, there are two types of injection spread in the market today, namely indirect injection and direct injection. But basically, these two types of injection still have identical working parts and mechanism. Starting from the nozzle, plunger, valve, valve spring, coil, control wire, and housing, which is divided into two, namely plastic housing and stainless housing. For the working principle, this injector aims to atomize the fuel by using high pressure from the fuel pump. The later this high-pressure fuel will be blown through a very small nozzle before mixing with air. This allows the fuel to mix more completely with the air, producing a more powerful burst and cleaner exhaust. Now to the mechanism of action. The injector will start working when the engine is started, where the gasoline pump will pump with high pressure until it fills the entire injector channel, usually in the range of 3 to 7 bar depending on the condition, type, and also engine capacity. Then when the engine is started, the intake valve will open and the engine will suck in air. At the same time, the ECU will give a signal in the form of an electric voltage through the control wire, which is channeled to the coil, which is a copper coil. This coil functions to convert electrical energy into a magnetic field and attracts the plunger with its iron material. At the same time, the valve will lift and then open the nozzle channel. Of course, the high fuel pressure, as well as the small diameter of the nozzle port, makes the liquid fuel come out at high speed, making the fuel that comes out into very small particles and has a size that almost resembles dew, approximately in the range of 100 micron. And when the power supply runs out or stops, the valve spring and gasoline pressure will push the plunger back until the valve closes in its original position. And this will continue to happen in every cycle. Okay, to clarify the function of all sensors is to provide a detailed description of the ECU regarding vehicle conditions, ambient conditions, engine conditions, etc. That can affect power, such as the slope of the vehicle, the height of the terrain above sea level, the quality of fuel, the oxygen content of the atmosphere, etc. Which of course, all these conditions will be calculated by the ECU to produce maximum power. Now that we've discussed how this injection system works, it's time to look at the limitations and advantages of direct and indirect injection. Let's discuss direct injection first, starting with its advantages. Advantages of direct injection. First, when the engine is cold, the engine is easier to start because the position of the spark plug is closer to the fuel source. Second advantage, more efficient use of fuel. Then, smaller combustion chamber, which can make heat efficiency better. Next, better power and performance. And finally, lower exhaust emissions. Now, the limitations of direct injection. First limitation, the engine sound will tend to be louder and rougher. Second, there will be prone to clogging in the injector caused by the small injector hole, 
and also directly receive the load from the power explosion. Thirdly, increase production of NOx or nitrogen oxide emissions. And finally, the production cost tends to be higher. Next, we will also discuss the advantages and limitations of indirect injection. For the advantages, first advantages, the high level of turbulence at different engine speeds makes the mixing process more uniform. And then second, does not require a high power injector or a smaller injector size where the size of the high power injector takes up a lot of space. Third, less likely to clog the injector. Fourth, production cost tends to be lower. While the limitations of indirect injection are, first, fuel consumption is less efficient and also low heat transfer. Second, high compression ratio is required to start. Third, frequent intake valve stalling. Finally, performance is not as good as indirect injection. Okay, that was the history and functioning of the injection system. The advantages and disadvantages of direct and indirect injection to how to maintain the injection system. So, that all the information we can share in this video. If you have criticism or suggestion, don't hesitate to write them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. 